Hi guys and welcome to my channel. So I have been seeing these all over Amazon. I see them recommended to me all the time. And this is the Mia Hemi gouache paint set, but they are supposed to have this unique jelly cup design. So I'm not 100% sure what that means. I don't know, I have a couple ideas, but I'm interested to kind of see how this works. It comes in three different colors. So this one, which is green, it's kind of more of a mint, and then a blue one and a yellow one. And I went with this color because I love mint. It came just like this. It wasn't like wrapped in any plastic or anything, which I thought was kind of weird. So it's like a little scuffed, but overall the like case that it's in, I really like, it's really cool. I feel like the case is solid. It's like nice solid plastic. So the price on this is $20.99 and it has 385 reviews with four and a half stars. So these are apparently non-toxic paints. They're good for artists, hobby painters, and kids. So I really have no idea what these are going to be like. But if I look at the actual description, it says that the set gives you 18 vibrant color choices. They use only the finest materials to ensure smooth application and true color that won't lose its vibrancy over time. So I think they're trying to say there that this is supposed to be light fast, um, but they don't actually use that word. <laughs> So these apparently have a unique jelly cup design. So these are supposed to have upgraded jelly cups. Uh, I'm not sure what they're upgraded from, but they're upgraded um, with easily removable lid to keep the paint wet and creamy. And it only takes seconds to replace when the paint runs out. So that seems very cool that like it's supposed to keep the paint wet. So I think this could be really, really interesting and helpful, um, especially if you can potentially even like replace the paint with your own paint. Um, it also says that it's had a drop test of like over 200 times to make sure it's leak proof, non breakable and good for outdoor painting. So that's actually really cool that it says that it's been tested um, that way because I'm very hard on my things sometimes. It has two little things on the side like Tupperware, open it up. And on the top, there's a little palette. Do, 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 do. And let's see, yeah, it fits in the lid. And then these are the little gouache cups. Ooh, this is exciting. It looks so nice. So how, how does this work? Okay, so each cup comes out individually. They have these little wrappers on top. So are the wrappers supposed to be resealable? I think maybe just cause like, you can just kind of place them back on top. Kind of like that. Like, are you supposed to keep these on? I think so. It doesn't really like stick in place or anything. So, I mean. We'll see. They're very packed tight into each other. So each cup is supposed to be 30 milliliters and I'm just gonna like open all of them. This is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna speed this up. Okay, start down here. Like this is where you wanna start, down at the bottom and then go this way because that's how they overlap and that makes sense. So smart. <gasps> Yay, living at high altitude. This happens a lot. Like I'm still not sure if I'm supposed to keep these tops on. They say they're resealable, so that makes me think I'm supposed to. Why aren't there directions? I'm gonna look it up, because I feel dumb right now. Okay, no, I think you do take off the whole plastic. Wow, I'm dumb. Okay, cool, all right. So, yeah, I'm dumb, and this is my own fault, but let's just, woo, let's, let's do this now. I don't know, I thought maybe that was how they, ah, stayed wet. Uh, quarantine is um doing some things to me. I'm sorry, who let me be doing this? Get out, get out, get out. Ah! Oh, fuck! Mmm, okay. This is entirely my own fault. So I don't know any of the names of these. I think they do have names on them, but they're in another language. And then there's numbers, but the numbers are just go between 12 and 11. These are all the paints. I feel like I made that so much harder than it should have been, but it's fine. They look interesting. They definitely have pigment it's on my hands something that i am concerned about is like when the lid and stuff are on here like it's gonna get covered in this paint so i guess we'll see i guess we'll see how that goes let's go ahead and play around with them and see what they're like 
and if they're a decent like quality of paint. So I'm gonna drop a picture and then we're gonna paint it and see how these perform. Okay, so the sketch I did was of some beautiful plants that I saw at the Botanic Gardens on my birthday back in July. I'm doing this on Arsh watercolor paper in my handmade sketchbook. And I think that's all the information that you need about the actual picture. So I started out by establishing a base layer of the overall colors and composition. I didn't do too much with the sketch. I didn't make it too complex. I find that for my own personal style, and the way that I paint, it works better for me to establish shapes and rely more on shapes than on line work, especially when I'm working with an opaque medium like gouache where I can really layer over the top and adjust those shapes and lines as I go. So that's kind of where I started with this guy. So let's talk about these paints and how they actually perform. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is some of the claims that were made in the description. So for me, one of the biggest and most intriguing claims was the concept that these would stay wet. With gouache, they do dry often and then they can they can be rewetted, but I personally have found that a lot of the gouache paints that I use don't work very well when they're rewetted. They tend to work significantly better straight out of the tube. So that was something that I was very interested in in terms of this palette. Obviously, I got extremely confused at the beginning with what was supposed to be keeping them wet, whether it was the actual lid of the palette or the little like metal, aluminum, plastic, whatever they were coverings that was pretty I'm I'm honestly embarrassed you guys I'm honestly embarrassed and I hope that you guys can forgive me um in hindsight I just I don't I don't really know why I thought that but the part that does keep it wet is obviously the lid the locking lid and it works um so I worked on this piece for about three or four days there were a couple days that I had break in between and throughout that the paints did not get dry at all with the one exception of the night that I actually forgot to put the lid on these the next day when I came in the paints were partially dried some of them had a partial dried kind of crust to them but they weren't fully dried and I was still totally able to use them since then it's been about maybe three weeks since I finished this and upon looking at my paints actually right before I filmed this they are still wet and in actuality the paints that had dried before are looking much more wet and uh, moist <laughs> than they were before and I think there is some condensation happening in the palette that's helping re-wet them as well so it actually definitely lived up to that claim which I was very pleasantly surprised by I really wasn't sure that it was going to I also live at a high altitude very dry state I live in Colorado so if they can stay wet here I feel like that's a really good sign frequently I'll actually keep my paints in the refrigerator because it helps them to last longer and to not dry out as quickly so if you're in a dry climate then these could definitely be something that is helpful for you the next claim that I was interested in well it wasn't really a claim it was actually my own personal concern so I had this concern that the palette, when I put it on top, the mixing palette, would get paint all over it because of the tops of the paint. And I felt like that was going to happen until I'd really used some of this paint. But luckily, that actually didn't happen. I was very surprised and also very happy when only a few little spots of paint transferred over to the palette. The only time that I really had an issue with transferring was when I actually dropped the paint palette on the floor. <laughs> Uh, and then there were obviously some more paints on that, but even then it wasn't that bad to be completely honest. They did also mention that it stands up to drops. I did not intentionally drop it or throw it, but I did knock it off the table because I am very clumsy. I am coming to realize and it totally lasted, totally survived, no breakage, nothing like that. So as far as the claims in terms of sturdiness, keeping things wet, all of that go Definitely true. I was very impressed. The packaging I really like. Um, and I think the packaging itself is is almost worth the money, even if you wanted to fill it with your own your own paints. 
So paints. Let's talk about the paints in here. So I've raved about the packaging. I'm digging the packaging, but do I actually like the paints? So these are jelly paints. They're supposed to be a jelly formula, which I've never tried before. So I didn't really know what to expect from these. When I was looking at them, the consistency and texture did look a little bit more like kids paints. Um, so I wasn't really sure. The texture of these paints meant that they were a lot more translucent than the gouache paints that I'm used to using, and the paints themselves were thinner. That doesn't mean that they weren't pigmented, however. They were definitely pigmented, especially the darker colors, and even though they're thinner and more translucent, they do build up really, really well. I didn't really notice as much lifting as I noticed with gouache in the past. A lot of times, gouache really, really mixes with the layers below, or at least it does for me, so it can be a little bit harder to build up as many layers I, as I want. And this one, I really didn't have as many issues. For those of you that really like lifting, that may be something that you dislike, but I am not really a huge, I don't use lifting very much in gouache, so that's a huge benefit for me. Also, because the colors were translucent, um, it really made it a lot easier to kind of keep layering and almost glaze the piece, adding in a lot of different subtle tones and values by adding in paints that are thinner and building those up with different colors to create something that's a little bit more complex and has a little bit more depth to it. So even though that's not the style of gouache that I'm normally used to using, I actually did really enjoy the different texture and the kind of different way to use it. it took a little bit of time to get used to it at the beginning but by the end I felt like I was starting to get a pretty good handle on the way that these paints performed one other thing that I felt was really helpful about the fact that they were quite thin was the fact that you could layer them up a lot more without it getting thick. So I talked a little bit about how layering works well with these because they don't lift as much. However, it also works well because they are so thin. With gouache, it's not flexible like the paper. Acrylic is a lot more flexible than gouache. So gouache has a tendency to crack when you build it up too thickly. Because these paints are so much thinner, it makes it harder to get get a very thick layer of paint even when you're building up a lot of colors. That's going to minimize cracking which is so great. When I looked back at this picture there was a tiny little bit of cracking in the thicker areas but it really wasn't too bad at all. As far as color selection goes, I did enjoy the color selection for the most part. I felt like the colors were very, very bright, which was really, really useful for when I was trying to build up some more vibrant colors, especially in the lime greens that I found somewhere in the leaves and some of that really bright pink in the center. There were two whites, which I wasn't quite sure why, and I'm still not quite sure. I can think of two potential options. The first is that they're two different whites, one being zinc white and one being titanium white. The other option that I can think of, which seems maybe a little bit more likely to me, is that they've given you two whites because white is going to be used more fast, more fast, faster, than all of the other paints in the set. Um... I'm not complaining. I think more white is always helpful when you are painting with opaque colors. I know when I use oil and acrylic, I always buy a larger tube of white paint just because you do run out of it faster because you're using it to tint a lot. <laughs> I personally would have preferred a few more blues and the one that I found that I was missing the most was more of a yellow green. There was one kind of yellow green in the set, but I definitely think I would have liked maybe a brighter yellow green like a lime that would have been very helpful for it, at least this guy. And yeah, I felt like most of the greens were a little bit more blue toned. So I definitely think a more yellow toned green would be helpful, but that was kind of my biggest critique in terms of the color selection. That was the biggest thing that I found myself missing. So overall, this piece has a night matte finish. As I said, it is hasn't really cracked or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with how these paints performed overall. I couldn't find too much information out there about them. So I'm not 100% sure on whether they're light fast or not pigment based or dye based. I could really only find them on an Amazon listing and then I could find the website of the brand, but I couldn't find these specific paints on the website. 
If you are using these paints, I would be a little bit cautious on if you're going to use them for like finished pieces that you're going to be selling only because I am not sure again if they're light fast or pigment based. So it's hard to know how long they're going to last or how archival they're going to be. But that said, I liked these paints. Overall, they definitely surprised me and I feel like I had a couple preconceived notions based on the description mentioning that they were kids paints and just overall not being able to find a whole lot of information about them, but I feel like they performed pretty well. I would recommend these paints for beginners that are looking to get into gouache, uh, people that are looking for something to paint plein air, especially in their sketchbook, uh, people that are interested in trying a different style of gouache. If you want to try something that's a little bit more translucent and a little bit thinner instead of more of the creamy thick consistency, this could be a really good thing for you to try out. So those are kind of my thoughts on these paints. I hope that you guys enjoyed this, that you found it helpful. And let me know if you do have any questions about these paints that I didn't address in this video. I will be more than happy to answer them. And let me know if you've tried these paints. What do you think of them? I would love to hear. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you would like to. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of your day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.